My name is Kari Pabimaya and I work at the Grenoble Ecole de Management. So I work as a researcher and a data analyst along with Dr. Mark Smith. So we look at um, one aspect of the youth labor employment market, which is known as flex security, which is a mix of flexibility of the labor market and security of social systems um, in which the European youth populist is immersed in. Uh, this is quite consequential because you look at what happened prior to the crisis and what's actually happening today. And you can see a certain kind of transition which is happening, um, which becomes extremely pertinent because what you essentially try and find out is what are the main factors that will improve the chances for the youth to find jobs in the future and what are the necessary steps that they actually have to do um, and also governments have to take so as to ensure a prosperous future for them. Flex security can be subdivided into four groups. You have uh, lifelong learning, social security systems, active labor market policies, and of course you've got um, uh, flexible and secure contractual agreements. These four aspects give you a very good idea as to what kind of an ambience um, the economy is immersed in. And based on that, we cherry pick certain indicators um, based on this definition, and we create a large data set. And then we run different kinds of analyses on that, like hierarchical clustering, to firstly find out how countries are positioned in relationship to each other. And more importantly, we can do some kind of a diddle down kind of analysis and find out how each country is behaving for each pertinent indicator. So for example, you could take the, uh, a country like Ireland, which was quite adversely affected after the crises. But the reaction time that they, um, they spent in order to get back into groove, per se, was quite short. And that was quite surprising, because you have the mediatic coverage of these kind of aspects, which is not always very optimistic. But when you actually turn around and see what's been going on behind the scenes, it does make you um, happy to find out that people are not just letting things go as they are. There are some kinds of measures that have been put into place. And you can, you can quantify this. You can measure it. So that's very... Uh, Surprising at the same time, it's, it's, it's good to see as well. Numbers explain a lot of things, but you can't base a, a conclusion just based on the numbers. First of all, we do have problems with data availability. Because we are looking at all EU countries, there are pockets of data which you don't actually get. And the problem with this kind of analysis is it limits the, the data size that you have. The more data that you have, the more inferences you can come up with. Having said that, once you do have all the data, it does turn around and actually give you an exp it gives you a picture of what's going on. But the explanation, that requires qualitative analysis to see what policies were put into place. And then the data just turns around and helps you measure the success rate of those policies. One aspect which I think is extremely pertinent, which hasn't been addressed or hasn't been addressed in, um, in its totality, is the impact of technology. We are looking at the fact that socioeconomic data represents a change or a transition in the European economy. But more importantly, we have to also take into consideration that technology is having a beneficial, at the same time, an adverse effect on society. So we do need to analyze what is the future impact, because till now, what we're basically looking at is what has actually already happened. What would be more important is also to see what can happen in the future. And that is going to be triggered by the technological evolution, which makes up the digital age. So this is something which has to be addressed because if you're going to be talking about education, well, what kind of education do you actually give the people? And to what extent? There is also a concept of over-education. So that's something that should be addressed. I don't think we've spent enough time addressing this issue. And it should be integrated in the final work uh, deliverable so that people get not just a historical analysis of what's happened, but what's going to happen in the future.